For the fairies of New England, terrible things began to happen that summer. George, what is it? George, what is it? What George, what is it? What happened? If you've never seen 1972's The Other, I wouldn't be surprised. The DVD is out of print, and it's not available to rent on streaming, and it's rarely shown on television. And that's too bad, because I think it's one of the best horror films of the 1970s, and the fact that it's so hard to find is really frustrating, because it's a film that deserves a wider audience. Directed by Robert Mulligan, director of To Kill a Mockingbird and The Summer of 42, and based on the best-selling novel by Tom Tryon with a screenplay written by Tryon, The Other is a thoroughly gothic tale permeated by horror and grief, told against the backdrop of the burning light and warmth of summer. The story takes place in 1935 in New England on the Perry family farm. The farmhouse is home to the extended Perry family, which includes aunts, uncles, and cousins, and 11-year-old twin boys, Niles and Holland. As the film opens, we see the twins spending what looks like an idyllic and carefree summer running around and causing mischief. Also living with them is their Russian grandmother, Ada. Ada has taught Niles how to project himself into other people and animals as a harmless game. Now, think as I have taught you. Feel inside it, into its head, its heart. Imagine it, Oscar. Yep, that's what she taught him and she thought it would be harmless. But as the summer wears on, a series of deadly tragedies strikes too close to home. And it begins to appear that the game wasn't harmless after all. This is a psychological horror that wears the mask of a nostalgic childhood story. Director Mulligan crafts a world that is seen through a child's eyes and in the beginning pulls in the viewer with the veneer of a simpler time. The film and the children seem innocent. They also seem harmless. Mulligan, one of the greatest at presenting a child's point of view on screen, triggers our sense of nostalgia. But then the story gently begins to unsettle the viewer because things start to feel off. Something is not quite right. The boys morbidly play in the apple cellar where their father died. Their mother seems physically and emotionally fragile, as if teetering on the brink of sanity, and that game, which at first seems harmless, takes on a very sinister twist. And when their cousin meets a tragic end, and the neighbor lady goes missing, that feeling of eerie unease transforms into the realization that something very horrifying is happening. Because once we learn there is no Holland in Isles. Holland is dead. Remember, on his birthday. And we don't know if we're watching a supernatural tale or if this is a story of madness. Robert Ebert said in his 1972 review of the film, the other has been criticized in some quarters because Mulligan made it too beautiful. They say too nostalgic. Not at all. His colors are rich and deep and dark, chocolatey browns and bloody reds. They aren't beautiful but perverse and menacing, and the farm isn't seen with warm nostalgia, but with a remembrance that it is haunted. There's also all these little sinister details sprinkled in the background that act as malevolent foreshadowing. The story of the changeling. You know, the fairy tale about the elf stealing the baby. The constant clanging of the treasures Niles has hidden away in an old tin can. The slightly off-tuned whistle of the theme that is heard sporadically on the soundtrack. It raises the hairs on the back of my neck. Martin and Chris Udvernoki as the twins, Holland and Niles, they give two of the best creepy kid performances on film. The boys are natural and there's nothing anachronistic or hammy about their performances. You believe these are kids growing up in the mid-1930s. And I think they're one of the major reasons why this film has aged so well. I really do think some films can haunt you in a way that they become like ghosts 
whispers of dialogue. Holland, where is the baby? Little fragments of the visuals that appear in the mind's eye to remind you of the unease and terror you felt. The other is that film for me. There are 8 million stories in the cinema cities. This has been one.